Another example of a divide and conquer sword is the quick sword. And in some ways, the quick sword is a really cool sword, especially how it's implemented with lists. And the way quick sword works is we're going to pick one element of our list, and we're going to call that element the pivot. And we're going to take everything that comes before the pivot and everything that comes after the pivot in sorted order. And we are going to sort those two halves and then stick them back together with the pivot in between. Okay. So now it turns out that the quality of quick sort is largely determined by how you pick your pivot. For our purposes here, we're going to pick a really bad pivot. Okay. Now that's not because we really want to have a bad pivot. It's because it's easiest this way. We'll come back uh, for a later treatment of recursion and sorts, and we'll pick a better version of, of we'll write a better version of this, and we'll one of the main improvements will be picking a better pivot. The pivot we're going to pick this time is the first element. And you might wind, wonder why that's bad. Well, the way that the quick sort works, if you want the pivot to be in the middle, because it's breaking things based upon the stuff that comes before the pivot and the stuff that comes after the pivot. The ideal quick sort would always get the exact median of your collection. Well, if the values that I give you are in sorted order or in inverse sorted order, picking the first element of the list is pretty much guaranteed to always be nowhere near the middle. It's going to be basically the first element or the last element. Despite that, that's how we're going to write our algorithm for here. So we're going to pass in a list, and it's going to be a list of doubles. And it's going to return a list of double. Because we're doing this with the immutable lists, they can't be changed, so we have to give back a new one. And I want to match on this. Okay. Nice things about lists or arrays, if you have nothing, well, it's already sorted. So we'll give it back to you. Similarly, if you only have one thing, that's sorted too. Missing an equal or greater than. And so we just give back the same thing. In all other cases, though, so our case underscore, and actually, why don't I do this? Since we decided we're going to call the first, we're going to make it so the first element is the pivot, pivot colon t. So I have a first element that I'm going to call my pivot, and everything else in the list is my t value. And I am going to break this into everything that's less than the pivot and everything that's not less than the pivot. And so how do I do that? Well, we'll introduce variables called less and greater. And there happens to be this very nice method that we can call called partition. Okay. And I want to partition this on everything less than pivot. So everything that's less than the pivot will go into less. Everything that is not less than the pivot will go into greater. Turns out things that are equal will also go into greater. So it's not the ideal variable name, but it works for our purposes here. And now I want to recursively do quick sorts on less and on greater. And I need to stick these together with the pivot in between them. Okay. So we've seen the triple quote cons for sticking lists together. And it turns out that I want to take just the pivot and stick it onto the result. So I take the greater part, I cons pivot onto that, and then I use the triple quote cons to pull to put the sorted version of the first half onto the second half. Okay, shall we see if that works? Scala, let's load in that file. It compiles. Does it run? We'll start with a little list. Ten elements. Missing an A in there. Okay. 0.4454686970727690939397 those are in sorted order and so are those
Okay, so this works. What about speed? What if I make this so instead of 10 elements, it's 10,000? That was pretty fast. 100,000? Took a little bit longer, but not too bad. A million? This is the type of thing that you definitely wouldn't want to do with a bubble sort, especially if you were bubble sorting a list so it wasn't happening in place. That works too, okay? A million takes a little bit longer. So what is the order of a quick sort? Well, it turns out that, once again, it all depends upon your pivot. If you get really bad pivots, so if I gave this thing a sorted list, this is actually an order n squared so, uh, sort. So the worst case performance of this quick sort is order n squared, and that happens in the situation where the pivot is not near the middle. If the pivot is the first element or the last element every single time, okay? Getting a bad pivot once isn't a problem. Getting the bad pivot every time, that's a problem. Okay? Because what winds up happening is either less is empty or greater is empty, in which case, you know, we're not breaking it in half. We're just, we're basically putting one element in sorted order. Effectively, it becomes something like a selection sort uh, if, we're, if we're doing that. But because I'm giving it random data here, and in the situation where the data is random, even this horrible selection of pivot, just picking the first element, is still going to give us in log n behavior. And the reason is because the partition is an order in operation. It has to run through everything and pick the things that are smaller and the things that are larger. Okay, so we have to do order in work at every step. That's where this in here is coming from. As long as we're always cutting it in half, repeatedly cutting it in half gives us log in base two number of cuts. So this calls itself and goes down log in levels. It's not always going to cut right in half. Uh, and so it turns out that there's a constant multiplier in front of this, but it's a constant multiplier in front of it. So it still is this order, and it actually winds up being a very nice sort. As you can see, it's very short and concise. Uh, it's easier to write than a lot of other sorts that we might have written on lists, uh, but it has very good performance uh, given the fact that it's so simple come back for another treatment of recursion, another treatment of quick sorts, where we'll actually do a good quick sort. Quick sort can happen in place. So a good quick sort actually typically works on an array and does, doesn't utilize any more memory than the original array, but it's a lot longer than the code that we've written here.